Hello, my name is Sonia Del Rincon. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Oncology, McGill University, and an investigator at the Lady Davis Institute for Medical Research. It is my great pleasure to introduce Fan Huang, the lead author of our study published in JCI entitled, Inhibiting the MINK-1-2 EIF4 E-axis impairs melanoma phenotype switching and potentiates anti-tumor immune responses. Fan is a brilliant PhD student who led this comprehensive study to understand the underappreciated role of translational control in regulating tumor cell plasticity and the response to immunotherapy. Thank you, Sonia, for this very kind introduction. My name is Fan Huang, and today I'm very excited to tell you about this paper. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer that is derived from melanocytes. Current treatments for melanoma patients include targeted therapies that target the MAP kinase pathway and immunotherapies that target immune checkpoints. However, none of these therapies are able to achieve a durable response in all groups of patients. For example, the target therapy agents, BRAF inhibitors vimurafenib and dabrafenib, only show efficacy in melanoma patients with specific BRAF mutations, and acquired resistance invariably occur. Similarly, not all patients respond to immunotherapies, and for those who initially respond, resistance can develop through different mechanisms, which drives us to search for additional treatments that can potentially sensitize melanoma to therapies, decrease the adverse events, and overcome resistance. In melanoma, two major pathways, the MAP kinase pathway and PI3K AKT signaling, are constitutively activated through different mutations. These two pathways converge at this spot, where a protein called EIF4E is phosphorylated. EIF4E is a cap-binding protein that facilitates mRNA translation in eukaryotic cells. It has only one phosphorylation site, S209, that is exclusively phosphorylated by kinases MINK1 and 2. This phosphorylation has been associated with melanoma progression, and in this paper, we investigated the role of the MINK EIF4E axis in melanoma progression and antitumor immunity. In order to study this, we generated this immune-competent knocking mouse model, where tyrosinase cre er system allows us to induce melanoma, and at the same time, EIF4E harbors an S209A mutation, so it cannot be phosphorylated. Using this model, we firstly show that, compared to the EIF4E wild-type mice, the knocking mice have decreased tumor outgrowth and metastasis. We also noticed that the knocking primary tumors are more pigmented compared to the wild-type tumors. The pigmentation of skin cells is due to the production of melanin, which is a key feature of melanocyte differentiation, and is tightly regulated by a key lineage transcriptional factor called MIDF. Indeed, we were able to show that the knock-in tumors have higher expression of MIDF, meaning that they are more differentiated, while the wild-type tumors are more dedifferentiated. Downstream of MIDF, there are two highly immunogenic melanoma antigens, melan A and GP100. Both of them are significantly increased in the knocking tumors. So the phenotype that the wild-type tumors are more dedifferentiated points to a mechanism where phospho4E might contribute to a process in melanoma called phenotype switching. Basically, melanoma cells can switch from a more differentiated and more proliferative state to a more dedifferentiated and more invasive state, with many other features as listed here. To demonstrate this, we generated wild-type versus knock-in tumor-derived cell lines. We see a very clear switch of phenotype that the knock-in tumor cell lines are more proliferative and less invasive compared to the wild-type cell lines. One important regulator of phenotype switching is a protein called NGFR. We indeed saw a huge decrease of NGFR protein level in the knock-in tumor-derived cell lines. And because fossil 4 regulates mRNA translation, we then did a polysome profiling and show here that the NGFR mRNA is shifted to the less efficiently translated polysome fractions in the knocking cells, where EF4E cannot be phosphorylated. This data suggests that NGFR is under translational regulation of fossil 4 e Next, we wanted to understand how tumor cell intrinsic fossil 4 e could potentially affect the tumor microenvironment. It has been shown that phenotype switching could lead to increased pro-inflammatory cytokine production. So we did a cytokine array using the wild-type versus knock-in tumor culture condition media, and we were able to identify a subset of cytokines and chemokines that are downregulated in the knock-in tumors. Among these secreted factors, we further identified CCL5 as another translational target of fossil 4 e 
to understand how the altered secretome could affect immune cell populations within the tumor microenvironment, we first show that the knocking tumors have higher infiltration of T cells and lower infiltration of MDSCs, the myeloid derived suppressor cells, meaning that they are more immune hot compared to the wild type tumors. To link this phenotype back to the tumor secretome, we designed a panel of ex vivo assays. We showed here that CD8 positive T cells are more activated in the knocking condition media compared to the wild type media. MDSCs are also less immunosuppressive when cultured in the knocking condition media. It is known that CCL5 facilitates MDSC recruitment. We show that the wild type tumor condition media, which contains higher concentration of CCL5, attract MDSCs better than the knocking media. When we disrupted the CCL5 CCR5 interaction using Maravarock, this phenotype is gone, suggesting that wild type tumors promote MDSC recruitment through high expression of CCL5. Finally, we isolated T cells directly from the draining lymph nodes of wild type versus knock in tumor bearing mice. Interestingly, with or without the presence of tumor cells, the T cells from the knocking lymph nodes are more activated. They also show better tumor killing ability, and such effect can be reduced when we knock down the melanoma antigen melanA from the tumor cells. This data suggested that a significant amount of T cells in the knocking draining lymph nodes are reactive to melanA, which are not present in the dedifferentiated wild type tumors. So far, we have shown that tumor cell intrinsic phospho4E promotes melanoma phenotype switching and shapes an immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment. Next, we investigated the tumor cell extrinsic role of phospho4E. When we injected the same tumor cells into wild type versus knocking hosts, we showed that after subcutaneous injection, tumors grow slower in the phospho4E deficient background. And after tail vein injection, the tumor cells also form less metastasis in the hosts lacking phospho4E. This group of data indicated a pro-tumorgenic role of melanoma cell extrinsic phospho4E. It has been reported that phospho4E regulates pdl one expression in multiple types of cancer cells. Since in a bulk tumor, cancer cells are not the only cell types that express pdl one we then hypothesized that the pdl one expression in some immune cells is also regulated by phospho4E. Indeed, PDL1 expression is significantly decreased in both dendritic cells and MDSCs from the knock-in tumor bearing mice. And functionally, phospho4E deficiency enhanced the dendritic cell mediated T cell activation and also impaired the MDSC mediated T cell suppression. So far, we have shown that phospho4E in melanoma cells promotes their phenotype switching with decreased expressions of melanocytic antigens decreased infiltration of T cells, and increased infiltration of MDSCs. In addition, phospho4 expression in dendritic cells and MDSCs regulates their pdl one expression, which makes the tumor microenvironment more immunosuppressive. All these features are associated with poor responses to immunotherapies, such as PD-1 blockade. Therefore, we hypothesized that systemically blocking phospho4E with MINK inhibitors could improve the efficiency of immunotherapy. So we combine the main inhibitor cell tier one with NTPD1 antibody. As expected, cell tier one sensitized melanoma to NTPD1 immunotherapy, and the combo group showed significantly decreased tumor outgrowth and improved survival. This phenotype is observed across three different melanoma models, including the BRAF P10 EIF4E wild type model, which is known to be immune cold and insensitive to NTPD1 therapy alone, the Yammer 1.7 model, which is highly immunogenic and the B16 PDL1 model, which represents highly aggressive triple wild type melanomas. Importantly, in melanomas that were treated with the combo therapies, we found a significant increase of the stem-like TCF1 positive, PD1 positive CD8 progenitor cells. These cells are required for maintaining a durable response to immune checkpoint blockades. In conclusion, we showed in this paper that phospho4E promotes melanoma phenotype switching through translational regulation of NGFR. Tumor cell intrinsic phospho4E also helps to shape an immunosuppressive microenvironment by reducing melanocytic antigens and increasing pro-inflammatory cytokines, which blocks T cells and attracts MDACs. In the tumor microenvironment specifically, the MINK EIF3 axis regulates PDL1 expression on dendritic cells and MDACs. Blocking phospho4E by MINK inhibition sensitizes melanoma to anti-PD1 immunotherapy with an increase of the stem-like CD8 progenitor cells. 
And finally, we hope this study could help to inform the translational and clinical development of MINK inhibitors in combination with immunotherapy, and ultimately help to benefit more melanoma patients.